Joining us now, the Atlantic staff writer, Franklin Four. His latest piece is titled The Golden Age of American Jews is Ending. Uh, Franklin, first off, I, I read that piece and it was, um, it was an amazing read. It was also extremely depressing. Um, talk to me about what these comments from Donald Trump do to the current conversation that's being had. Well, first of all, we need to understand that there is history here that his re his remarks conjure that authoritarian regimes, anti-Semitic regimes have a long history of dividing Jews into the good Jews and the bad Jews. The good Jews are the Jews who align themselves with the leader and the state and the bad Jews who are, who are the ones who don't. And that distinction gets made not just to praise the good Jews, but it's done as a pretext for punishing, excluding, discriminating against the bad Jews. So when he says something like this, it occurs in the context of all of this history, and that's why it's anti-Semitic on its face, but it's also just chilling knowing the ways in which those distinctions can lead to very terrible things. Talk to me about what happened after Donald Trump's 2016 victory in terms of anti-Semitism. Right. So um, after October 7th, there was this incredible surge of anti-Semitism. But I think it's also important to go back and look at it in the entirety of its context. So over the course of the last decade, and it didn't just begin with Donald Trump, there has been this slow erosion of the acceptance and tolerance that American Jews have had in this society. But 2016 certainly was the turning point because in the final ad of Donald Trump's campaign, he flashed the faces of three Jews, Lloyd Blankfein, Janet Yellen, George Soros, and described them as globalists who were bleeding the people dry, which was a classic anti-Semitic narrative. Then, over the course of his campaign, he also, in, in his presidency, he winked at the white supremacists who praised him, but also said incredibly vile things. And so he had the effect of expanding what was tolerated, what was permissible in American discourse, and anti-Semitism, which had been kind of locked away, shut out of the mainstream, began to bolt its way into what was permissible and what was mainstream. And that, in turn, had the effect of encouraging this rise in, in, in hate crimes and other forms of harassment that have um, really surged in the last couple of years. Franklin, uh, Senator Schumer has responded. He called the president's, former President Trump's comments utterly disgusting and a textbook example of the kind of anti-Semitism facing Jews uh, today. And he also went on to say, nobody who breaks bread with anti-Semites like Nick uh, um, Fuentes. Uh, Fuentes, thank you. It was a typo here. And who called white supremacists in Charlottesville good people or who was, as was recently reported, said disgustingly that Hitler did some good things, has any right to lecture Jewish Americans about their personal political beliefs. Now, the Trump team and, and allies of Donald Trump will come back and say, hey, listen, Donald Trump is a big supporter of Israel. He's a big supporter of Benjamin Netanyahu. He moved the embassy at the request of Israel. How do you square that? So, I mean, there's a lot that Donald Trump says and does, and not all of it adds up. And um, American Jews happen to have very divergent opinions about Israel. It's just a fact. And Chuck Schumer is somebody who, in addition to giving the speech that he gave, gave another powerful speech on the floor of the Senate about the ways in which anti-Semitism is on the rise and comes from both the left and the right. And so he criticized people on his own side in the course of doing that. But I think what Trump does, in effect, is he talks out of both sides of his mouth. On the one side of the mouth, he says, I'm doing all these things for Israel and Jews must love me. And if they don't love me for all the things that I've done for Israel, they are bad people. And we know the way in which his campaign and the people around him and the, the, the passions that he incites ends up treating people who he deems to be bad people. That's the dangerous part. Franklin Four, really good to have you. Thank you very much.